everybody this morning. How are you doing? Uh, we, we, we come in this way every Sunday morning, right? <laughs> uh, it's so great to be back in America, back with my people, and uh, uh, we're so blessed. And for those of you who don't know, I've been in Hungary for about a couple weeks here, and just really appreciate the prayers and, and support, and I love, uh, love the people there, miss them already, look forward to sharing a little bit more in the next couple weeks uh, with all God is doing and did do with us there. Um, but I want to welcome you to our movie series, At the Movies. Uh, over the next few weeks, we're going to tie some biblical themes and gospel themes with some modern movies and movies from pop culture, kind of like Jesus did when he looked around and would teach in parable. Our movies that we view and see are, are kind of like modern day parables for us. Most of us understand uh, different themes that run throughout. Is anybody aware of the movie that I'm kind of dressed up like? Uh, anybody watched the, any of the Rocky movies? You know? Okay, well that's good. If, if you've lived under a rock in America the last five decades, then you're not familiar with what just happened. Uh, Rocky is a boxer. He's that underdog that could take a beating and he would always get up and he would always go to the very last round. And sometimes he would win and sometimes he would tie. Uh, but it, just an amazing um, story, American story. And it's one of those movies that I think if you're an American, it's like you have to watch. I don't know. I, I just, maybe that's just me. And if, if you know the movies, you know there's six, I had to look it up to be sure, there's six Rocky films in, in all, and then there's three Creed films. So the last few movies that have been spun off from the Rockies are Apollo Creed's son, who then starts boxing, and actually Creed three is going to be out in 2023. So another movie as a result of it. But I, I remember the first Rocky where Rocky's fighting Apollo Creed. Here's this, here's this kind of underdog on the streets of Philly guy that, that gets this shot at the heavyweight champion of the world in boxing, and he takes it and goes the distance. And it's an amazing underdog story. Even Sylvester Stallone, the actor of Rocky, the, the, his whole movie career is an underdog story with the film Rocky. Nobody knew who, who Sylvester Stallone was. And then he wrote this script himself and through some finagling with the, with the company, with the film studio, he got to be the lead role in it, went on to win an Academy Award and all kinds of stuff. And then some of you probably know Mr. T., or Hulk Hogan, they were in ne the next movies, Rocky Three, Rocky Four. That's pretty much wh where I got this from. Rocky Four, Ivan Drago, right, the Russian, and and he ends up killing Apollo Creed in the ring, and Rocky dons Apollo's collars, his robe and his gloves, and Apollo would wear the American flag, and he goes to Russia and defeats. Ivan Drago and tries to unite a country and that was in 1985 and then the Berlin Wall came down in 89 and maybe Rocky united the countries I don't know I don't know movies are powerful stories are powerful and today we're going to kind of look at a few different of the Rocky movies specifically the the last one where Rocky is kind of coming out of retirement to fight a young heavyweight as more as more of an exhibition match almost like George Foreman. You remember when George Foreman came out about 10 years ago or so and fought as a old man, I guess you can say? He came out and fought an exhibition match and then we got the George Foreman grill and all kinds of stuff as a result. It was an amazing opportunity for him. But here in a couple minutes, we're gonna look at a clip. You see, Rocky had some kids and he had a son who wasn't exactly happy with Rocky coming out of retirement and doing this exhibition match because he knew Rocky couldn't go the distance. And his son was sick of living in his father's shadow. And like so many parent-child conversations, the clip we're going to see here in a few minutes, Rocky tells his boy that he always wanted the best for him. And his son is blaming Rocky. He's blaming the world. His son doesn't feel like he's successful that he, that he feels like he hasn't got a break in his life for himself. And Rocky always re tries to remind him how much he loves him, that he only wanted the best for him. And it, 
And it reminded me of God's plan for our life. How no matter what, no matter how many times that we get beaten down in life, that we can know and trust that God loves us and he wants the best for us. And he wants us to keep going, to keep getting up, to keep moving forward. And see, over the years, I've had hundreds, maybe even thousands of people come up to me and say, Pastor, I really want to be used by God. I want to do this. I want to do that. But if, and they never really experience that goodness of God in their life because they're unwilling to set aside their own plans and their own agendas and their own wishes and start following God's. You see, I'm reminded of Rocky's son there and how so often that's us. Even as Christians, we know we have a loving Father in heaven that loves us so much. He gave his only begotten son for us. And we want to be used by God, but we have things we want to do in this world. And what happens is the same thing that happens with Rocky's son. We start pointing the finger at other things. We start pointing our finger at people, at circumstances, at injustices, instead of looking at ourself. Instead of asking, God, what do we need to let go of? How do I need to change to serve you? Instead, we point our finger. We create these artificial barriers that hold us back, that keep us down, that keep us from being as successful as God wants us to be as we follow him in this life. And this is, this is a message in Rocky that we've got to stop pointing our fingers. You've got to stop pointing your finger at your boss or your parents or the bully. You've got to stop blaming the government or the other political party or those people. You've got to stop pointing your finger at, at others and blaming them for how you're held back or beat down or can't move forward, you've got to stop putting up your own barriers and instead start trusting and relying on God and following Him. See, you'll never get an explanation for most of the pain that you endure in this life. And if you read the Bible, you'll understand this. God can and does use our pain and our suffering he uses it and turns it into a beautiful picture but when we are experiencing it we can't see it by faith we have to have to trust in god and it's only when we look back that we can truly see god's hands his hands in our life and as we followed him just the beautiful picture he's made as a result You see, most of the time we never get an explanation for our pain in this life. And when we get to heaven, when we get to heaven, we may understand more about why bad things or things we thought were bad happened to us. But I kind of guess that when we get there, we won't even care anymore. We won't even be worried about those things. Because the reality is that God doesn't owe us an explanation for it. And the good news is is that we don't need an explanation. If, If Jesus is our Lord and Savior, we don't need an explanation. Because we know that God loves us and God has a plan for us. And it's the best. And we also know that God will settle the score with whoever has hurt us in this life. So we don't have to. And he will do it perfectly. You see, God never wastes our hurt. He never wastes our pain. He never wastes our suffering. And when we welcome the light of Christ into our lives, God will use that hurt, the very real injustice and abuse that have happened to us, to create a beautiful picture through our lives. This is what Rocky Balboa is trying to get across to his son. 
And I think we can take this and understand it in a different way or a similar way that our Father in Heaven, God, has a plan for us too. But so many of us, when we go through suffering or pain, we get beat down and beat up. And somewhere along the way, like Rocky's son, we start pointing the finger at other people as the problem, as the cause, as, as the issue that we're dealing with. And in those moments, we're tempted to stop getting back up. Take a look at Rocky's conversation with his son. Rocky said, let me tell you something you already know. And I'm pretty sure everybody in this room already knows this too. The world ain't all sunshine and roses, and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place. And I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. See, I think this is God's message to us today. God wants us to get up and keep moving forward. He wants you to get up and keep moving forward. No matter what you are dealing with, what you are suffering through, what you've experienced in this, in, in this life. Life will beat you down, and it does. But God wants you to get up and keep moving forward. And do you know how you can get beat down and keep going? Do you know what you need? Over and over again, Scripture makes it so clear. You need faith. You need faith. Faith unlocks the promises of God. It unlocks the power of God that we need to get us through. Faith turns dreams into realities and gives us the power we need to keep getting up when we get beat down. Faith. And somewhere along the lines, we bought some sort of false truth as, as American Christians that God doesn't that, that God will always take us out of the problem. And that's not true. God doesn't always take you out of the problem. What he does do is he stretches your faith by taking you through the problem. It's just like going to a gym and working out. If you're a boxer, it's not easy. It's grueling. It's long days of jogging and jump roping and punching and lifting weights. It's not easy. But if you want to build your muscles, if you want to build your endurance, you have to do the time, you have to do the work. God will rarely take us out of the problem, but he will stretch our faith and help strengthen it and help it grow as he guides us through our problems. You see, God doesn't always take away our pain, but he gives us the faith-fueled ability to handle it. Because faith is what we need to get up to keep moving, to keep getting up and moving forward and doing what we know is right. See, the Apostle Peter understood this. He understood it all too well. When he wrote his letter in 1 Peter, this was the time in Christianity where it wasn't easy to be a follower of Christ. Family members were turning other Christians in and they would be arrested and killed and executed and literally thrown in the Colosseum and fed to lions and crucified. Peter knew his time was up very soon. He was seeing people that he knew die for their faith. And friends, in America, we talk about persecution. We are not persecuted. We are not in fear of somebody coming into the church right now and killing us because we're Christians. We can pray in public. We can talk about our faith. We can share it without the threat of being stoned to death. 
When I was in Hungary, I got the amazing blessing of being able to teach a Bible study to international, to international church that speaks English. There are 30, 40 people, adults and PhD students from the university and other master's degree students and undergrads. One of the young men, Ragul, was from India. He had to have been maybe 24 years old, 23, as a PhD student in, in pharmacology. And he says, people talk about persecution, but I can't share my faith publicly. He said, I've seen people stoned to death. This is happening around the world today. We don't understand persecution here, but this is the kind of persecution Peter talks about. This is really getting beat down. Suffering. And in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 19, this is what Peter says, knowing that he himself will likely be killed and martyred for his faith. He says, if you are suffering in a manner that pleases God, look at what he says, keep on doing what is right. He's saying, keep getting up. Keep moving forward. Don't give up. Don't give in. Keep doing what is right and trust your lives to the God who created you. Trust. Have faith in God. For he will never fail you. Rocky Balboa said it like this. He said, every champion was once a contender who refused to give up. See, you've, you've probably heard it before, and it's true. God doesn't always take us out of the storm because he wants us to trust him in the midst of the storm. I remember reading stories of Corey Tinboom. Some of you are familiar with her. She was a young Dutch Christian who helped many Jews escape the concentration camps and the Holocaust before she and her family themselves were thrown into Auschwitz in a concentration camp for assisting Jews. I was reminded of her as we toured through Budapest and saw the atrocities thousands upon thousands, millions of Jews that were executed from Hungary alone, murdered. One of the memorials that we went to was on the banks of the Danube River and there were bronze shoes anchored into the concrete edge of the river, just dozens and hundreds of them as a tribute to the countless lives, tens of thousands of Jews that were marched down there from little children to adults and they were executed on the side of the river for their bodies to fall in Corrie Ten Boom when she wrote about the concentration camp after World War II ended she said that people who lived through those camps were those who had the deepest faith Why? Why were they the ones that lived through the camps? Because faith gives you the power to hold on in tough times. It produces persistence to keep going, to keep getting up. You see, study after study shows that probably one of the most important characteristics that you can teach your child or you can learn yourself is persistence to keep getting up, keep moving forward, the ability to bounce back. See, nobody goes through life with an unbroken chain of successes. Nobody does. Everybody has failures and mistakes. We all have moments where we embarrass ourselves. Some like right now in front of everybody. <laughs> we all have pain. We all have problems. We all have pressures. People who make it in life, who truly live the kind of blessed life that God has in store, are the ones that are persistent in their faith. 
I don't know how many times I've woke up and wanted to resign throughout my life, the different jobs I've had, even as a pastor. I've talked to a number of pastors that throughout the pandemic wanted to resign, and many of them did. Because it was a time when there was no right answer, but everyone had the right answer. And no matter what decision any church leadership made or any person made, it was the wrong one for someone. And it wasn't easy, and it's still not easy. I'm guessing, like many of us in the room, there is times in your life when you woke up and you felt like quitting your job. You felt like quitting on your kids, quitting on your marriage, maybe quitting in life, quitting at AA, quitting school, quitting coming to church, maybe even quitting your relationship with Jesus. There's a lot of that that's happened after COVID as well. The people who make it in life have a faith-fueled persistence. God says, keep going. Keep going. That's what Peter meant in 419. Keep on doing what is right. Keep getting up. Keep putting one foot in front of the other. Keep moving forward. Don't give up and don't give in. We are so blessed as a church coming out of the pandemic, if that's even real or not. Many churches lost 50% of their membership that didn't return after COVID. Somewhere around 60% or more of our church came back together. But that, that means 25, 30% has chose to stay home. Some worshiping from home for health reasons, but others stepping out of church altogether. Some because they saw the infighting of Christians with one another. God says, keep going. Don't give up. Keep moving forward. Keep worshiping together. Keep praising me. Keep relying on me. And where do we get that persistence to keep going? It's faith. It's faith. Faith is believing God could do something at any moment that will change the direction of our life. That will transform it. And you don't want to miss it. So you have to keep moving forward. Like Peter said, trust in God. And the one who created you. Trust in him. Keep doing what was right and move forward. And trust that God will give you exactly what you need when you need it. See, it kind of reminds me of the Apostle Paul. When I think about Rocky... If we're going to look at Rocky typologically in the New Testament, I think the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul was a guy that was beaten and stoned and left for dead, was shipwrecked and imprisoned, and he didn't stay down. He kept getting up. He kept moving forward. He kept on going and doing what was right. And there's a passage over in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9 that's Paul's personal testimony to this. He said it like this, we are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. See, Rocky Balboa was known for never getting up, for getting beat and knocked down and He continued to get up over and over again. And he went the distance, and he's kind of like the Apostle Paul. Even though he got knocked down, he kept getting up round after round in the boxing ring, blow after blow. He went the distance, but he was not destroyed. There's a a moment where Rocky learned a lesson from his old trainer, Mickey, Mick, in Rocky too, and I, I can't say I I don't know. You know how Mickey talked. I can't do that. It's just not possible. But just imagine Mick is talking to Rocky. You see, Rocky in Rocky 2 had went the distance with Apollo in Rocky 1, and he was ready to give up. 
He was ready to give in. He didn't want to train. He didn't want to do the work. He knew it was painful. And it, it's not easy to train and to go through problems and pains and struggles in order to be strengthened, to be able to go the distance. And right when he's ready to give up, this is what Mickey said. He said, for a 45-minute fight, you've got to train hard for 45,000 minutes. 45,000. That's 10 weeks. That's 10 hours a day. You listening? And you ain't even trained one. You see, the reality is that we want instant success. Whenever pain and struggles and stuff comes our way, we want to be transported to the other side of it. We don't want to have to go through the struggle or the pain or the training of faith and perseverance and persistence. We just want it easy, and it doesn't normally work that way. Because when life knocks us down, we've got to keep going knowing that God will never abandon us. He loves us, and he will not let us be destroyed. We need to keep getting up and doing what's right and moving forward. God will not let us be destroyed. And that takes faith. It takes persistence. I read a story about a nun that she was a caregiver and, and she worked in hospice and she was on her way to see one of the people that she was serving and caring for. And she got in her car and the uh, gas light came on. And uh, I mean, she's a nun. She doesn't have a husband. I know about 50-50 shot when I get in my wife's vehicle, our van. I get in, the gas light's on. It's like my ministry to my wife. I have to go fill up her vehicle. I don't know, maybe men, that's, you can get, might get an amen from some other guys about that. But Anyway, she was on the way to, to see one of her patients in the last moments of their life, and she runs out of gas. She ran out of gas about a block away from a filling station, a gas station. So she's like praising God. Wow, right here. So she walks to the gas station. She goes into the attendant, and she's like, do you have a can that I can borrow, put some gas in to fill up, to come back to the station? And, and the attendant's like, oh, I'm sorry. We just loaned out our only gas can, but if you wait, if you can be patient a little bit, I'm sure they'll bring it back here soon, and then you can have it. And the nun is like, well, this is kind of life or death. So she decided to go to her car to rummage through to find anything that would hold gas that she could then put in her car. And, and she was going through her back seat and her trunk and she comes across an old bedpan. We know what a bedpan is. People urinate in them when they can't get up and use the bathroom. So she found it and, and it was clean. And she went to the gas station, and there she is in this amazing MacGyver moment, just happy with herself that she had this vessel to put some gas in. And she goes back, and she's putting the gas in her car. Just at the time, two guys are walking down the sidewalk. And one of them turns to the other and just says, well, you look at that, that's faith. <laughs> You see, the moral of this story is one person's persistence can look like a miracle to someone else. Can I tell you why you need to keep getting up? Why you need to have persistence? Why you need to have your faith strengthened and not give up? It's because God loves you. You have a Father in heaven that loves you no matter what. He knows those same old sins that you struggle in. He knows the problems you're dealing with. He knows what happened 20 years ago, two weeks ago, or last night. He knows the issues you have with your family. Maybe not your family, because your family's perfect, but he knows the issues you have at work, at home, with kids in your school, with your students, with your coworkers. He knows. He doesn't want you to give up. He wants you to keep going.
because he loves you no matter what. See, at the end of that clip that we saw with Rocky, this is what he says to his son. And I think that some of us may need to hear this message from our Father in heaven. Rocky said, I'm always going to love you no matter what. No matter what happens. See, I don't think it's strange that we can trace similar things throughout the New Testament with somebody like the Apostle Paul that dealt with persecution and getting beat physically for his faith. I was reminded of Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. When I think about God's love, I think about this place where Paul says that I'm convinced that neither death nor life neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The love of a mother or father cannot compare to God's love for you. There's no place that you can go in this world where God's love isn't there for you. You will never be separated from God's love if Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. And if you ever have any doubt that God wants you to give up and give in and not moving forward, just look to Christ. He was literally beaten and whipped and murdered on the cross for your sin and my sin, the sins of the world, for our mistakes. But did he stay down? Could Satan or the grave hold him down? No, he got up. On the third day, he rose, proving he wasn't giving up and he wasn't giving in. Proving that no matter what, God truly so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You see, God doesn't always take away your pain, but he gives you the faith-fueled ability to handle it, to work through it. And he wants you to understand that no matter what, he loves you. No matter what, God loves you. Would you please pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so very much that your love is high enough to overlook every one of our mistakes. That your love is deep enough to meet us when we are in the pit of despair. God, we know the reality that this life will beat us down. None of us make it through this life completely successful without pain. All of us have people that we love that will go on before us. All of us will struggle with loneliness and depression and, and trials and tests. Your love for us through Christ, our Lord and Savior, lasts forever and is with us everywhere. God, we thank you that in those moments where we still have pain, that you give us the faith-fueled ability through Christ Jesus, through the power of your Spirit to handle it, knowing that you have a plan for us, knowing that you want us to keep getting up to keep doing what's right knowing that no matter what you love us Father we know that there are some with us today maybe joining online right now or a week from now or five years from now who've never accepted your offer of love in Christ 
This is your message to them, that if they've never accepted the sacrifice of Christ that you provided for them, that they need to right now, today. They need to get up, accept Christ, accept your love. Stop letting life beat them down and start accepting the love of God, His grace and mercy and letting Him lead you to the life He has in store. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And if you wish to accept Christ, please come forward at this time. This is a time as we stand and sing and praise God together. Scripture says when we praise God, Satan flees. So as we praise God, this is a moment when you can recommit your life or this is a moment when you can commit your life for the first time. God wants you to get up, to move forward through the faith fuel ability that he gives you through his spirit. Let's all rise and praise God.